Hey campus, Georgia, back in my man cave. <laughs> Been a busy week. Had my brother, my older brother came up and visited for about 10 days. He had some work to do up here and he decided to stay for a couple of days with me and we spent some time together. It's been a while, a couple of years since we had any time together with everything going on. Anyway, he came up, we did some fishing, we hung out, we went to places, but that's another story. Anyway. Today, I'm looking at something that got delivered last night when I got back from work. And that is the Versatec Pry Bar. Yeah, I know. If you look at some of the reviews on this, they're brutal. I understand what they're saying, but for me, this was something I want to have a look at. The, you know, everything that's made, there's a reason it's made. And the people who make it obviously feel it's useful for something, and that's why they make it. And it's basically a pry bar multi-tool. And I'm not sure if it's any use to anybody. One of the reviews I, I thought was interesting, it was more of a rant. And he went on about it saying that, you know, people don't need these things. You know, he said it's more for first responders and things like that. I don't even think if I'm not even so sure that they would want to use it. Uh, besides the fact that it's compact and, you know, you could use it for some things. For me, I saw this online and I thought, huh, that's interesting. Got to have a look, see. After all, it does have a sharp and shiny bit to it. So, you know me. <laughs> so let's have a look, see at that. Let's go. So here it is here. It's the Versatec. They just call it a Versatec pry bar. It's Reaper. R-E-A-P-R. A nice little play on words there. Packaging is your standard packaging these days. You know, the cardboard backing with the, the plastic seal in it that I really hate. So it's well packaged. It looks very nice. And you can see it here. And on the front it says the 4-inch blade, ABS non-slip handle and 1680D ballistic sheath. And as you can see, it does have a, it's sitting outside, I don't know if you can see that, but it does have a sheath that comes with it. Uh, 420 stainless steel, four inch powder coated wrinkle finish blade, multifunction pry bar with chisel, blade, ripper hook and wrench. And the wrench sizes are 10 mil, 13 mil and 16 mil. Pretty common sizes that are used a lot. These are things that I carry on me. Those are the sizes I typically use the most. So I can see why they went with that. ABS non-slip handle, 1680D ballistic sheath, 10 inches overall, 255 millimeters. Five inch handle, 130 millimeters. They have the usual warnings. Uh, it does have a limited lifetime warranty by Sheffield, Mineola, New York, 11501. And you can visit them at www.sheffield-tools.com. So there you have it there on the back. You can see it all there. Now, before we even get going on this thing, uh, I have something to say. It's pretty small. And for a pry bar, you're going to limit yourself. Just looking at the tool and feeling the weight, it's, it's not very heavy at all. And, you know, it's stainless steel. It looks well made right now in the package. And I think the idea they had was a good idea. Will it do what most people are hoping? Probably not. But really the only way we can figure that out is actually try it. So my interest, I'm an outdoor person. So as far as survival or tactical, I don't know. It, it might be useful. Personally, right off the bat when I saw it, I was thinking urban survival. Not something you'd walk around town with on your belt. But certainly go on a backpack or something, or in your backpack, as a, an EDC tool inside your backpack. So let's get it out of the package and have a closer look. All right, we got it out of the package and here it is here. And I just realized, huh, I threw away the sheath. Here it is here. <laughs> here you can see it here. And... Uh, you can see how big it's only 10 inches. It's it's not huge. It has a little bit of weight to it, but for what it's designed for, prying and that sort of thing, the size and the weight will limit it. You have label there. It has the handle on it. Uh, this is obviously the pry bar, nail puller, or whatever you want to call it. And here's the blade right here. And then they do have the protector there. People like me need that. I believe this to be the chisel. Yeah, this is, uh, that's a chisel. 
That's not part of the blade. Don't get confused on that. And here is your blade. Here is your tool, pretty typical. And here is kind of like a gut hook, cord cutter, that sort of thing. I'm not sure how sharp it is. We'll give that a test. You can see the handle here. It, it, it's, a, it's a pretty good handle. I mean, uh, it doesn't slip very much and the way they've designed it is stop it from slipping out of your hand there. And then the pry bar here with the nail puller um, looks okay. Standard pry bar style. The blade, oh, it feels pretty sharp. Let's see if we can cut this. This is, uh, let's just give it a slice. Oh, it cut it all the way through. You can see there, it did cut it. But it is thick cardboard. I, I would think not so much as a knife, but more as a chopping tool. Chop up stuff. Certainly that's what I would use it for. The chisel here. Not sure how handy that would be. But back to the blade, it's a, what did they say? I think it was four inches, right? Four inch blade. There you go. So you've got four inches here. The handle is big enough for what you're going to use this for. I'm probably going to have gloves. One thing that I wanted to discuss, and that is this blade and the pry bar here. If you grab the pry bar here and pry things, you've lost all that strength by losing this here. So I'm thinking that you would have to have that sheath on. And speaking of the sheath, here it is here. It's that ballistic material. See, it has Reaper on there. It does look well made. Uh, it does have a clip on the back here that opens. I suppose you could put that on your belt, but it clips at the top. Okay, that tells me, well, this is really designed for, this is Molly. So you'd go on, on your backpack, obviously you'd put it on the outside of your backpack, do it that way. You could hang it on your belt like that, but I don't like the idea of this being on top because it's just going to slide out. It's your uh, clip here. So let's put it in here, which by the way, the clip is in there. So it goes in there and you can see that the clip actually goes over that little shoulder on the blade. This little shoulder right here. So that goes in, clips over there. Oh, it's a little tight there, but it goes on, no problem. And it seems to be in there pretty sturdy. So you put it through your molly on your backpack and it would hang down. You could put it on a belt, I suppose. Let's try it. And so I would uh, clip it on here. See how sturdy this is. Uh, it seems pretty sturdy. I'm off too easy. And it's got a little bit of a swing to it. But taking it out. Just, so you would just take it out like that. Putting it back in. Blade the other way. And it, it, it oh, look at that. I pulled down on it and it popped out. Let's try that again. Yeah, if it catches on something, it's going to come out. So I don't think that's what it's really designed for. Interestingly enough, they show it on a belt, on a guy's belt on their website. So personally, I think this is Molly. This is definitely used for Molly. So on the outside of your backpack or just throw it inside. It's not that big. It's not that wide. So that's going to be on your backpack. That's going to be sticking out. You're going to have to be aware of that. I like it. You know, it, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I suppose that's not a good enough reason to buy it. But for me, it is. I like to look at cool things and different things and see what people come up with. There you have the basics of it. You have the, you have the sheath. And then here it is here. It's 10 inches. The handle. Four inch blade. Your multi-tools here your cord cutter or whatever you want to call it, and the chisel in front, don't get confused. That's not a blade, it's a chisel. The pry bar is an issue for me. You're going to have to keep the sheath on there. That'll work. You're going to have to use it with the sheath on. Don't get me wrong. It's a fancy looking tool and it's kind of okay. I think of it as a pry bar multi-tool. 
And whenever you go multi-tool, it becomes a jack of all trades, master of none, unfortunately. They can be convenient for carry purposes. I'm going to go outside with it and beat up on some wood because I would certainly consider this as an outside tool for me. I, I, I'm not an urban guy. I tend to stay away from the, from the towns and the crowds. As a survival tool, an urban survival tool, I don't know if you could open a door with this, force a door open, maybe a window or break a window with it. Other than that, nothing special. Some things I could probably use it for and they do call it an outdoor EDC. And that's how much I paid for it. Not bad, not expensive, and it, it does look well made. I will say that it, this is my little 25 liter bushcrafty backpack that I have. I go through two of them. So, hmm. gonna go. they should really, if this is for Molly, had a piece of Molly across here, but they don't. So, it just goes through your standard two pieces of Molly. So, it goes on there. I mean, it, it clips on. That's not a surprise, but it's a little bit floppy do and it's not quite long oh maybe not quite long enough to go through three molly loops molly on the on the inside so that you can uh, weave it like you should with molly out we go Okay, so we're outside here in uh, my outside play area in the South 40. Got it with me, the Reaper. Got some gloves, really concerned about that blade. Got a couple of pieces of wood. Let's play. One thing I did notice walking down and putting it in my pocket, my hand kept catching. On the pry but I did think about another place you could keep this uh, if you're a contractor out there doing construction that sort of thing might be a handy thing to have in your tool pouch on your side it does have a couple of things you could use it for but for me like I said I'm outdoorsy so I'm looking for something I can use when I'm out in the wilderness uh, processing wood is probably going to be the big one and oh lord we're burning to the ground no <laughs> ambulance it's stuck in the wood just fine it does have a uh, reason it's almost a tanto blade style thing except this is not a blade like let's get at it first thing i want to do is i want to test out the chopper now i am wearing gloves i think using this tool you're going to have to uh, because uh, too many sharp things and sharp areas on it might be a problem so the first thing I want to do is I want to see if I can chop a piece of wood with it this blade does feel pretty sharp so we'll give it a go the only issue I'm seeing is it really doesn't have a lot of weight with a small piece of wood here and just wow look at that went right in there huh well that's a good start So it's sharp enough. This is not really hard wood at all, but it is getting in there. And you could chop away. It's not very big. I think I want to go bigger. Get rid of those. Much harder wood tended to bounce off, and that's an indication of a weight issue. You're going to have that problem. Without any weight, it's going to bounce. Your blade will bounce. <laughs> I want to see if I can actually, you'd have to work your way around this thing. And it's not really cutting into the bark. Can you see that? It's denting it more than cutting. So it's limited on what you can chop up with. But I think that's more of a weight issue. If you don't have any weight behind you now on an ax, I wonder if we can bludgeon. Maybe that would work. So we could do this and bludgeon with it. Maybe that'll work. Let's 
give it a try. A couple of swats here with this. It's going in. That would probably be your best option. Striking it just with the the handle isn't going to work. Bludgeon in there, you can see. So I don't see a problem there. This will get through something like that. Just using a bit of bludgeoning will get you through. Seems thick enough and heavy enough to handle it. I mean, it's not a thin little blade at all. You can see there. So I'm sure it'll handle it. It is a work tool, I would suppose. It's designed to take some abuse. That would be the way to use it. Still, we're a little small on the logs. Better than nothing. Could make fire out of it. I'll process some wood. Let's see if we can split here. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'd split that, no problem. It's not a very big piece of wood, but it splits it. Let's see how small we can get here. And if you're wondering why I'm trying to get as small as possible, yeah, I want to see if I can feather with it. Not bad, not bad at all. I'm getting my curls. So you can feather with it. So far it's doing what I expected. I mean, you limited the size thing. What else do I want to do? I really would like to see. I don't have a good piece of wood. I know what we can do. I want to see if I can strike a ferro rod with it. I wonder if this edge here is good enough for a ferro rod. Let's give it a try. Got my Eric's ferro rod, I use them a lot. Well, works for me. Well, they obviously thought about that. The chisel and the rest of the tool, this, the chisel and the pry bar, I'm not sure if I see any use for it outside, outdoors. In construction, probably. Try the pry bar. I got a piece of wood, some nails in it. How that blade's doing? It's holding up pretty well. I'm not seeing any problems with it. An old pallet board, the base. Got some nails, I put some nails in there. First thing I want to do is put my gloves back on. <laughs> Because now I'm going to the handle side and I'm worried about that blade. So if I want to pry, well, pry is actually broke the nail. More a nasty nail than anything else, but it will pry. You can pry with it. Who knows? You're limited there. There's no real grip on it then. Normally on a pry bar, this inner piece here is a little bit sharpened. It's not sharp, but it's, it's got a bevel to it, which helps grip the nail, especially when it gets long like this. You can put the pry bar in really hard and pry up. I can't with this. It's just slipping on the nail, and, that, and that's a problem. Now, I haven't put that sheath on because I have pretty thick work leather gloves on. And I'm not grabbing here. So I'm using the handle, but that's going to limit my, my strength on the pry. Well, it's straightened the nail, and that's going to be a problem. Again, we have that problem on the length. I'm going to see if I can get a little bit more strength out of it by having this on and gripping further up past the handle see if that helps yeah you see I've already gained a lot of leverage just by going from the handle to where the blade is then I've reached that length on the nail and it's not gripping let me see if I can find my small pry bar in the shed okay so I have a, the smallest pry bar I have here I think it might be a Stanley I'm not sure 
pry on that. And here's what I'm talking about. One of the problems is, see the length here and that. So now I'm limited as to the length of the nail I can pull out, but once again, it is a small compact tool. There, having that extra bit is a good thing. Now, what I wanted to show you was, if you look in the slot here where the, the nail goes, can you see that? And it's beveled almost to a point on the uh, on the bottom here, which helps grip the nail. If you can go down, catch the bottom of the nail, pull it. Go down, catch the bottom of the nail, and pull it. With this guy, if you look at it, and I'll I'll try and get a better picture. It's not beveled; it's flat, especially down at the bottom here. It's just rounded off. I mean, they have a little lip there where you can catch the top of the nail, but you can't grab the nail from the bottom and pull up on it. Bevel it yourself with a file or something, and you see that? It's a U versus this guy, which is a V. I thought about testing this, the multi-bolt uh, wrench or whatever you want to call it. What was it, 10 to 13? I'm, I'm pretty sure you can get it to work. I don't see a problem there and I really don't have anything to do it with. Keep that in mind on this tool. It's a jack of all trades and really a master of none. But uh, it, I, I can see maybe a, putting it in your tool pouch, like I said, if you construction work it. One thing I haven't tested is this guy, the kind of gut hook cable cutter thing doesn't look that sharp let's give it a try brought a couple of different kinds here here I've got just some regular 550 550 cord let's see if it'll cut it oh nope if I wriggle it that's an issue it got through but you gotta swing it around a little bit see that Look at my hand, it's so close to that blade, my thumb. Here's a piece of cordage that's not 550, let's see if that'll cut. And I'm going to keep my hand a little bit further away, oh, right through. So it struggles a little bit with uh, 550, but just this cordage, the type of thing you get on your tents and things like that. There's a different piece of 550, let's try it, which is really like 550. Cut through that. If that fails, I suppose you do have a blade, <laughs> which cuts no problem. What do you think? I like the idea. Yeah, it'll work, but it is limited. Certainly process some wood with it to make a fire. The fact that it'll strike a ferro rod feather with it, it's a nice idea. For the price, you know, it would be something handy, maybe in your camp kit going car camping a nice little thing to have in your box of goodies but a real tool it's limited very limited the biggest thing is portable I must say the blade did come sharp can't complain about that and really the things that it's designed to do with the limitations it does it what do you think would you consider something like this you saw the price it's not bad it's well made Handles nice. The sheath, good quality. I'm not sure about this though. This thing pops off really easy. You want to save your bushcraft knife? This could do a lot of the tasks it does for processing wood. When I first saw this, I kind of liked the idea of it. It works. It'll do, I suppose, certain tasks that you want it to. Just have to keep in mind that you're limited. Don't forget now. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> you know the story. Pretty sure I'll be back with maybe something else. I have seen a lot of these. Not, I mean, I don't mean the Reaper. I mean, a lot of different people have made them with different ideas. How good they are, I'm not sure. And how this stacks up against it, 
I'm not sure. You'd have to figure that out yourself. It's kind of, I like to try things. I'm a hands-on guy. I've got to feel it and touch it. And if it's sharp and shiny, I'm lost. Just saying. Thanks for watching. Be safe out there.